Well, good morning, everybody. You may be seated for a few more moments. Hey, Amen. We're going to start a little early with some announcements. Just let you know uh, some things that are happening here at Bethesda Church that we're excited about. Are you excited about them as well? You would say, well, tell me about them, then I'll let you know if I'm excited, right? But, uh, hey, we've got a baby blessing table going up for uh, uh, Hunter and Tara Brown. We're excited about that. They're uh, welcoming a little boy very, very soon. Uh, and so uh, starting next Sunday, you can bring some gifts, and uh, there is a baby blessing table set up just on the right-hand side of the foyer when you leave. So let's make sure we let them know how much we appreciate and love them. Amen. Also, we have a summer bash coming up July 25th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's for our kids' uh, ministry. We're excited about that. It's going to have some great inflatables. Kona ice is always a hit. And also the extreme animals will be here, kind of like a small petting zoo and different things. And uh, so it'll be a great time uh, for the kids to come out. 11 to 2, great outreach opportunity. So if you have any kids in the neighborhood that uh, need to come to church, need Jesus, it's an awesome time uh, to invite them uh, to come be part of that. Yeah, get with Miss Michaela if you have any questions on that. Also excited about a men's opportunity that we have coming up, Promise Keeper Simulcast. Uh, is coming up, and, and that's actually going to be uh, July 31st and August 1st. I'm not sure why that says April 4th. Um, I think they're just testing me to make sure I know what I'm talking about. Uh, so July, there we go. Come on. Now that still says April 4th. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Third time's a charm. Hey, but that's all right. Uh, July 31st. There, just take the date off. Just let me fill in the date. Friday, July 31st, 6 to 9 p.m. And then Saturday, 9 to 12. It's a free simulcast. We'll be here at the church. We'll be right here in the sanctuary. But you know what I want to do, guys? As soon as, as soon as we wrap up at 12 o'clock on Saturday with the Promise Keepers event, I want to go ahead and uh, I'm going to have a lunch boxed up for you guys that we can eat, and then we're going to have a cornhole tournament, and we're going to give some stuff away. Does that sound fun? All right. So this is for, t this is for youth as well. Bring them. Come on. Kids need to hear about this, but excited about this, and uh, we're going to just keep on rolling on announcements, but uh, excited about this opportunity to host this event. Um, you can sign up on our website, okcbethesda.com, go to events, and uh, there will be a Promise Keeper event tab. So also September 11th through the 12th is a daughter's conference. Any ladies out there? Amen. Didn't that look like a good daughter up there? Amen. There it is, September 11th through 12th, and uh, excited about that as well. Many of you ladies have been to this before, and uh, $60 early bird uh, special f uh, goes through August 11th, and you can register at okag.org slash daughters on the OKAG website. And make sure you get signed up for that. It's always a great time. I believe this year it's going to be at a crossroads, so a lot more room, a lot more space, and uh, that's a great conference to be to as well. And now let's go ahead and show Mr. Russ Taff August 30th. We were supposed to have him back in March, and then something called COVID came up, and uh, we had to cancel and postpone. So Russ Taff August 30th, 10 a.m., excited about that. And, uh, hey, how many want to know how Pastor Miss Vicky's doing? Yes, I know you did. Stick around to the end of the service. I'll let you know. Amen. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They're doing good. They're doing good. They're resting up. Miss Vicky hasn't had fever in three days. Praise the Lord. And uh, so we're excited about that. And uh, Pastor's doing good as well. Um, but they're just mending up, healing up. And uh, as soon as they get the all clear, they'll be back with us. So continue to pray for them. And we'll, we'll pray for them here in a little bit. But I appreciate everybody that's prayed for them over this last week, uh, each and every day. And continue to do so. Amen. Amen. Now you can stand on your feet. We're so glad you're here and uh, excited to hear what the Lord has in store this morning for us. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here to worship with me. Glad you're here to worship with me. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Lord. Let's worship together. What do you say? Come on. Oh, now more 
This morning, I know you do. Amen. Man, I want to welcome each and every one of you that here's, that's here this morning for the very first time. Uh, it's a privilege that you're here. So blessed to have you here and uh, just excited that the Lord would cause you to be here this morning. So welcome. Your family with us today. And uh, in the pew pocket in, uh, behind you or in front of you, you'll find a Connect card. Just fill that Connect card out. And uh, fill it out, leave it on the pew, and we'll send you a gift and a letter this week just to let you know how good it is to have you this morning. And to all those that are tuning in online this morning, you'll go to okcbethesda.com, hit the connect button, and uh, drop down. We'll come down, just fill that card out uh, online, and uh, we'd love to send you something as well. How many are thankful for the goodness of God this morning? Amen. There's nothing like it. Can we lift our hands to our Heavenly Father this morning? Father. We already sent you here today. And Lord, we sent your presence in a mighty and real way. And God, we just pray that everything that's done for the next hour or so, that Lord, you would get the glory, that you would get the honor, that truly that you deserve, Lord. Hearts would be lifted up. But Lord, most of all, that our worship this morning would be a sweet aroma in your throne room. That you would accept our praise you would accept our hearts of humility this morning to say, Lord, without you, we are nothing, but through you, we can do all things who gives us strength this morning. So, Lord, lift people up. Encourage them today as we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe that this morning, say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Lifted hands across this place. Come on, let's break through this morning. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. And all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up, Till I lay my head, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. For all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice, for you have led me through the fire and darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. Come on, lift it up all my life. For all my life you have been faithful. Thank you, Lord. All my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will see of the goodness of God come on your mercy your mercy is running after it's running after me your goodness is running With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. I'll sing it again. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Oh, yeah. Your goodness is running after, it keeps running. With my life. 
all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will see of the goodness of God come on let's proclaim a Bethesda all my life for all my life you have been faithful. Thank you, Lord. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness. Come on, let's lift it up again. Your goodness. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Oh, yeah. it's your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it keeps running after. you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will see of the goodness of God oh I will see of the goodness of God, I will sing of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Good Lord. He's so good, amen. Oh, you're good to us, Lord. You are wonderful, Jesus. You are wonderful, Lord. Aren't you glad he continues to run after you? He always pursues you. He always pursues me. And Father, we pursue you this morning. I want you to know whether it's a whispered tone or a shouted voice, he hears your heart's cry today, and he loves you. So, Lord, we rest on your promises that are yes and amen this morning. Holy Spirit, increase your presence this morning. Just whisper his name. Jesus. Whisper his name. Jesus. Whisper his name, Jesus, and he will answer you. Whisper his name, Jesus, whisper his name, Jesus, whisper his name, Jesus, and he will answer you. Just call out his name, Jesus, call out his name. Jesus, call out his name, Jesus, and he will come to you. Just call out his name, come on, Jesus, call out his name, Jesus, call out his name, Jesus, and he will come to you. Just shout out his name.
selfish pride For when we fall down on our knees For when we lift our hands to say You are all we need Yes, you are Just call out His name Call out his name. Jesus. Call out his name. Jesus. And he will come to you. Just call out his name. Jesus. Call out his name. Jesus. Call out his name. selfish pride Oh Lord we fall down on our knees oh, yeah. We lift our hands and say You are all we need Come on say that again You're all we need Oh, you're all, you're all we need. Yes, you are. You're all I need. So there's one great choir this morning. Can we proclaim this? Glory to you in the highest place. 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 Come on, break through this one but that's Come on. Glory to you in the highest place. Glory to you in the highest place. Glory to you in the highest place. Come on, Glory one more to time. You in the highest place. Glory to 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 you in the highest place. Shout out his name. Jesus. Shout out his name.
believe he's still able and very much capable of meeting your need this morning whatever that looks like with an extended hand to the heavenly father just say lord we give you each and every need we give you each and every circumstance today knowing that you are the author and the finisher of our faith today that you love us so much that you gave your son for us to die for our sins so that we could have forgiveness and eternal life with you, Lord. Father, for those in this room today or that are watching that need healing this morning, you took those stripes for us. By your stripes, we are healed today. The crown of thorns, we receive that. And they pierced you in the side. The nail scarred and the, the feet that were pierced for us. So, Lord, we proclaim victory this morning. We, we, we proclaim healing this morning because you love us so much, God. I love you, Jesus. Oh, I worship you, Lord. There's a sweet presence this morning. Father, we lift our pastors to you. Lord, how much you love them. And then, God, I continue to pray a prayer of healing and blessing over their heart and their life. But, Lord, most of all, these symptoms would cease. And that, God, you would just even this moment, as your presence is there in their house, that, God, they would sense just a refreshing, just completely cover them in this moment. And that, God, you would have your supernatural power and strength. Just do only what it can do. And that's just to continue to saturate their lives and their hearts and their physical body at this moment, Lord. Lord, bring them back to us very soon, Father, in full health. Lord, they have such a heart to serve you, such a desire to continue to work for your kingdom to, to lead others to you Lord by example and by word and so Lord we just claim and believe for complete healing this morning so Lord encourage them today encourage them today and Lord I pray even at this moment they feel such an improvement God we stand in the gap for them this morning For Miss Rita, God, that's still in ICU, Lord, you know exactly where she is in her circumstance and situation, God. Lord, we pray for these blood clots to go. We pray for the damage that has been done, Father, to be reversed. Lord, I pray today, God, Lord, that you would just give them uh, great renewed hope, Father. The entire family and Miss Rita as well. Meet her right there where she is today, God. Father, I pray for those that are dealing with with cancer right now, God. Lord, that you would continue to lift them up, Father. And that, Lord, their hearts would be filled with joy and peace today, knowing that you were in control of all things, God. So, Lord, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. For greater are you that is within us than any cancer that could ever be within. So, Lord, cancel it out. Heal it today, Father. For financial needs, Father. Father, I pray as they're faithful to you, you'll continue to be faithful to them. God, open up the windows of heaven for emotional needs today, Father. Be the peace that passes all understanding. For our government today, God, for our nation, Father, we humble ourselves, as that song said, we we humble ourselves and we kneel before you and say, Lord, without you we are nothing. So, Lord, may we as believers stand in the gap and pray for our nation daily. We thank you for it, Jesus. Come on, proclaim this. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and 
fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence lord holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here, God, flood this place and fill Of you, Jesus. Thank you for meeting with us this morning. Thank you for your presence today. Hallelujah. You are wonderful. Come on, just breathe him in for a minute. You are wonderful. Let the anxiety leave, the stress, the pressures. He just loves on you this morning. You are welcome. 
come here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for being the temple. That we can be the temple. That you come and reside in this morning. We're filled with power because of you this morning. Lord, and our praise and glory goes directly to you today. So thank you for meeting with us again. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You may be seated this morning in the presence of an amazing God. Thank you, worship team. Amen. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Amen. Do you agree with that this morning? Aren't you glad you come to a church where you walk in the doors, you can sense something? Amen. Nothing like coming home on a long school day, and as soon as you walk in the door, Mama had something made for you, whether it be that scent of chocolate chip cookies or something that she made, and you just walk through the doors, and you go... Oh, I love coming into the house of the Lord and just feeling that presence immediately. And one of the things that people say many times about Bethesda is no matter when they come, if it's been uh, many people that come and they just visit from time to time and our special guests, our missionaries say, I love coming to Bethesda because we can always sense the power of the Holy Spirit. And you know what that's from? That's from people like you that prepare the way through prayer, through intercession, and your faithfulness. So thank you for being here this morning. And um, my name is Michael. I'm the associate pastor, music pastor here. Pastor Josh is on the front row with Miss Lanisa. It's our youth pastor here on the front row. And uh, appreciate those guys a bunch. And um, they're about to leave for camp this week. Amen. We definitely need to pray for them this week. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They're heading out to camp. And we're just praying that lives be touched, healed, and filled. Amen, that students' lives are changed forever. How many of you met your spouse at camp? Can I see a hand? Anybody? Amen. Pastor met Miss Vicky at camp. Amen. And so who knows, you might just meet your spouse at camp. How many were called into the ministry at camp? I was. How many was filled with the Holy Spirit at camp? Come on, somebody. How many were saved at camp? How many love just going to camp? Amen. All right. I saw a lot of hands, Pastor Josh, so you have a lot of leaders next year that are ready to go with you. Amen. But pray for our students this week as they leave Wednesday, and they'll be back Saturday. That God does some wonderful and mighty things. And uh, but uh, Pastor Craig and Vicky Dacus, man, we love you guys. We miss you. But looking forward to getting you back as soon as possible. And uh, but this morning, Amen. Excited about the Word of God that's about to come forward. And uh, so, Mr. Michael Bridge, would you come and bring the Word? Give him a big hand as he comes this morning. Amen. Love you, buddy. I appreciate those guys in the back. Now, you guys don't know this, but, you know, with electricity and everything that happens, you never know what might happen. And they were here this morning making sure everything works. So I know that they don't like recognition, but I appreciate all that they do. Amen? And if they mess something up from this point forward, I'm going to get them because I bragged on them, right? No, I'm just kidding. They all help me out because I'm, I'm the worst when I'm back there. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, bring the word this morning, although I would rather be hearing our pastor, uh, but we're praying that he gets well. And maybe after I'm finished preaching, you'll be praying even harder that he gets well, so that you don't have to ever uh, hear me again for a, for a long, long time. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want us to go to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3. I'm going to read one verse there. Ephesians chapter 3. And this morning I'm going to preach a message entitled, The Blindfold. The Blindfold, okay? Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 20. The New Living Translation says, Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us 
to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Another translation that we're probably more familiar with says this in part. It says, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Now, when I was a kid, we would go visit my grandpa and grandma Mankins, and she worked for J.C. Penney for many years. I think she was in alterations. Uh, but always at their house, they had the J.C. Penney catalog. Anybody have the J.C. Penney catalog? I don't even know if they're out there now. Most of the stores are closing, but maybe the catalog, uh, maybe that business is booming. I don't know. But J.C. Penney came out with these catalogs, and they were always around their house. But Christmas time was the big one. You got the J.C. Penney Christmas catalog. And there were times that my brothers and I, we would go over to, to their house and we would just kind of lay down in the living room floor. We would take that catalog, we would get our pen, and we would turn to the toy section. And I mean, we would circle everything that we wanted. We would circle what we loved, what we liked, and what we thought we might learn to like. By the time we were finished, it was easier to tell what we didn't circle than what was circled. Because you see, when you're a kid and you're circling in that catalog, money is no object, right? In fact, we didn't even look at the price. We, we were just circling. Op, the, the money is the parent's problem, amen? Uh, but not when you're a kid. When you're a kid, hey, the sky's the limit, man. You just, you just go for it. Now, I share that story with you because in some ways, on some level, some people almost treat this verse like a J.C. Penney catalog moment where they just begin to say, what? He can do exceedingly and abundantly? Well, give me my pencil. Let me start circling. I want this and I want this and give me this and give me this because all I got to do is circle it because it says that he will, he will do more, abundantly more. It's just a give me, give me, give me. You know, God, you can do abundantly more than... You can give me a, some designer clothes in my closet. You can put a luxury car in my driveway. And God, I know you can put some cold, hard cash in my bank account. Just circle, circle, circle. It's almost as if God has become their personal Santa Claus. Now, I could have used the word genie there. I could have said their personal genie, but in the middle of July, I thought Santa Claus sounded a little bit more refreshing. Amen? I mean, seriously, have you ever, let's go off the subject a little bit, but have you ever tried to just psych yourself out in the summertime by watching a Christmas movie? I mean, you're so hot, and you're like, ah, turn on Hallmark. Is the Christmas movie's on? Let me see some snow. Amen? It, hey, the struggle's real. But getting back to this, some folks, they kind of look at verse 20 almost as if it's a glorified shopping spree, a heavenly handout. But the truth is we can dress it up however we want. We can give it whatever name we want. But the bottom line is, is to look at this scripture in that way is to totally disregard the part of the verse that says, according to the power that works in us. The power that works in us is the Holy Spirit. Everything that God does, he does through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, it says, it works in us, and he can do in us more than we could ever imagine, more than we could ever dream. However, as his name says, he is the Holy Spirit. He's not the greedy spirit. He's not the selfish spirit. He's the Holy Spirit. Hmm. That means that he does not work in folks who all they want to do is satisfy their own selfish desires. And there goes the shopping spree, just like that. But you know what I believe? I believe that the depth of this scripture the depth of this scripture goes far beyond what God is able to get to us and more to the point, he wants to get something in us and something through us. And he can get something in us far greater than we could ever think or imagine. You see, the abundant side of God is reserved for those who are looking to advance his kingdom, not their agenda. 
But let me ask you a question. If God desires, and he does, to do exceedingly more, abundantly more, why is it that so many times we settle for considerably less? If he wants to give us more, why do we settle for less? I believe many times it's because we cannot see past our own vision. We cannot see past our own vision. You see, sight is a powerful adversary to faith. In fact, I call it the kryptonite of faith. I know we live in a world and we operate by what we see, by sight. But God has called us to live this walk by faith. And so we, we struggle with that and the world doesn't help any because when you walk by faith, all they want to do is, you know, make fun of you and, and call you crazy or whatever the case. And so there's a struggle there. The truth is it's much easier to quote, I walk by faith and not by sight than it is to actually live by faith and not by sight. So to make things a little easier on us, what do we do? We limit our faith. You see, we have in our mind what we believe is probable. We believe God for the probable. We have in our mind what is probable, and then we move that needle a little bit this way to what is possible. And there somewhere in between the probable and the possible, we begin to plant our flag of faith and we stake our claim between what is probable and possible. And when we do that, we limit our faith. We limit our faith. But what would happen? What would happen if instead of limiting our faith, we were to narrow our vision. Watch this. I want to see you do the death crawl again, except I want to see your absolute best. <laughs> <laughs> what, you want me to go to the 30? I think you can go to the 50. The 50? I can go to the 50 if nobody's on my back. I think you can do it with Jeremy on your back. But even if you can, I want you to promise me you're going to do your best. All right. Your best. Okay. You gonna give me your best? I'm gonna give you my best. All right, one more thing. I want you to do it blindfolded. Why? Because I want you giving up at a certain point when you can go further. Get down. Jeremy, get on his back. I get a good tight hold, Jeremy. All right, let's go, Brock. Keep your knees off the ground, just your hands and feet. There you go. A little bit left, a little bit left. I bet he does it. There you go, baby. There you go. Show me good effort. That way, Brock. You keep coming. There you go. It's a good start. A little bit left. A little bit left. There you go, Brock. Good strength. That's it, Brock. That's it. Forget the 20. You give me your best. You keep going. That's it. I want everything you got. Come on, keep going. It hurts. Don't quit on me. Your very best. Keep driving. Keep driving. There you go. There you go. He's heavy. I know I'm, he's heavy. I'm bad out of strength. Then you negotiate with your body to find more strength, but don't you give up on me, Brock. You keep going. You hear me? You keep going. You're doing good. You keep going. Do not quit on me. You keep going. It hurts. I know it hurts. You keep going. You keep going. It's all hard from here. 30 more steps. You keep going, Brock. Come on. Keep going. Burn. And let it burn. It's all hard. It's so hard. You keep going, Brock. Come on. Come on. Keep going. You promised me your best. Your best. Don't stop. Keep going. Too hard. It's not too hard. You keep going. Come on, Brock. Give me more. Give me more. Keep going. 20 more steps. 20 more. Keep going. Go, Brock Kelly. You don't quit on me. No, you keep going, you keep going, go Rock, 10 more steps, 10 more, 10 more, 10 more, keep going, don't quit, give me your heart, you can, you can, five more, five more, come on Rock, come on, don't quit, don't quit, come on Rock, two more, one more. Oh. <laughs> Let's go to the city, I'll have him more.
Look up, Brock. You're in the end zone. That's my favorite line right there. <laughs> Who's next? Can I tell you just uh, real quick, Christian movies have come a long way, haven't they? I mean, that one's a few years ago, but I mean, how many remembers the time of a distant thunder and a thief in the night? They used to love showing those at CA rallies. I mean, here I am inviting my friends to come to a CA rally, so I think we're going to just enjoy good music and maybe some good preaching and fellowship. No, they got a projector set up, and they say, hey, guess what? We're going to watch A Distant Thunder. Next thing you know, people are getting their heads chopped off. But I will say this. I got saved every time that movie was over. Before I went to bed that night, I was like, Lord, if I've done anything, forgive me, but I'm thankful that they've come a long ways. But the thing that caught my attention most in that video was not the impressive strength of the player, although it was very impressive. Probably like some of you, when that movie first came out, I thought, oh, I can do the death crawl. Now, again, this was several years ago, several pounds ago. And uh, I thought, oh, I can do that death crawl. So I, uh, I got my youngest daughter, Caitlin. I said, Caitlin, let's see if we can do this death crawl. Now, again, as a side note, guys, tomorrow my youngest daughter turns 21 years old. I've got a daughter, my oldest daughter just got engaged. My youngest daughter's turning 21. We're in a pandemic. What a time to be alive. Amen. What a time to be alive. But I said, okay, Caitlin, let's try the death crawl. So she gets on my back and, and I, I begin and I, it's a struggle. Sure, it's a struggle. And I take off and I go and I go and I go. And then at about five yards I just collapse. I'd rather have a bowl of ice cream than do the death crawl another second. About five yards, I thought, hmm. Now, you know what my first thought was? My first thought wasn't, man, that dude is strong to be able to do that. No, you know what my first thought was? Trick photography. If I can't do it, then I know he couldn't have done it. And I don't know if he used trick photography or not. That doesn't really matter. The point is, that was the first thought that I had, trick photography. But what really caught my attention, again, was not the strength of the player, but it was the fact that the coach said, I'm going to put a blindfold on you. That's what caught my attention. The blindfold, which to the player at the time may have seemed like a hindrance, actually became a blessing. And my hope this morning before we're finished is that every one of us will understand the blindfold blessing, that you will walk out of here this morning with a blindfold on. Now, I don't mean that literally. I mean figuratively. We'd have a hard time maintaining social distancing if we're all going to put blindfolds on and walk out of this building. So I don't mean that. But figuratively speaking, in the video, Brock, who was the player, he asked his coach, he said, Coach, what's the purpose of the blindfold? Why do I need to wear it? And the coach's reply was this. I don't want you quitting when you could have gone further. Well, what in the world would a blindfold have to do with someone not quitting? Well, we're going to get to that. But may I tell you this morning, the purpose of the blindfold was to help move the player beyond what was expected. And as it relates to us and an abundant God, it, well, he wants to move us not only beyond what is expect us, expected, he wants to move us into the realm of the impossible. And that video, based on what he achieved in the past and based upon what he thought he could do in the present, Brock sets a goal for himself. He says, I believe I can make it to the 30-yard line. And then, of course, the coach says, oh, Brock, you can make it to the 50. He's like, oh, I can make it to the 50 and no one's on my back. Oh, you can do it if Jeremy's on your back. Yeah, I've seen the movie a few times. And so he says, you can do it if Jeremy's on your back. He says, all right, fine. I'll go to the 50. So now he has staked his claim in the probable of the 30 
and the possible of the 50. But that's as far as he believes he can go. He was living in the land of the probable and the possible. But now without that blindfold, he would have stopped when he got to the 30. I believe that because, first of all, he wasn't that excited to do it to begin with. The coach kind of had to encourage him, hey, you're going to do it again. Had he gone to that 30 and he noticed, hey, I just passed the 30-yard line, I'm good. Or let's just say, I'm going to make coach proud. I'm going to go all the way to that 50. So he's looking and he finally gets to that 50. And then he just collapses and said, I've done it. Well, that's pretty good. I mean, he had, he had met his expectations. He was tired but satisfied. He had reached his goal. And for that matter, he exceeded the expectations of all the other players because you could tell looking on their face, they didn't think he was going to make it past the 10-yard line. They were laughing at him. That's kind of what the world does to us. When God has given us something and we're believing for more and we believe God can do more in us and wants to use us, sometimes folks in the world and in the church laugh at you and say you're crazy. But can I tell you the only people who really see the impossible become possible are the crazy people? Because they're willing to step out and believe God. And yet for all the accolades that he would have received from the other players, do you know what he would have probably heard from his coach? Son, you stopped short. You could have gone further. You might say that the coach believed that his player could have gone exceedingly, abundantly further than he could ever think or imagine. But without that blindfold, the temptation to settle for the expected and stop short of the impossible is very real. We sometimes become satisfied from where God has brought us that we have no interest in going where God wants to take us. We become satisfied with yesterday's testimony. We become satisfied with what God has done and we'll share with everybody, look what the Lord has done, but how about we share with someone, look what the Lord will do. But we become satisfied. We're living in the land of probable and possible and God wants to take us to the other side of possible. I think of the life of David. David was a man of faith. I like to call it blindfold faith. David made statements like this. If 10,000 of my enemies were right around me, I would not worry. I would lay down and sleep. That's a man of blindfold faith. But I want us to think about David for a moment. What happened if David, during his journey, had decided he was satisfied? He started off as a shepherd boy, watching his, father, watching his father's flock, and, and he was faithful at that job. And when he's talking to Saul later on, he says, hey, I was watching those sheep and one day a bear came. I killed that bear. And another day a lion came. Guess what? I killed that lion. I killed a lion and a bear. I mean, think about how satisfied he could have been right then. He didn't have to go any further. He could have his friends over from school, the other little shepherd boys, and say, hey, guys, guess what? You see that bear rug? I did that. You see that lion I have mounted over there? That was me. That was bare hands, man, bare hands. Think about how much he could have got out of that story. And the people would have come and said, hey, that's David. He killed a bear. That's David. He killed a lion. So what if David had just become satisfied? That's pretty impressive. It wasn't like he was Samson. But had David become satisfied with his success as a shepherd, he would have never met a giant named Goliath. Now, killing a bear, impressive. Killing a lion, impressive. But when you take out a giant, no less with a slingshot, that's over the top impressive. People start singing songs about you in vacation Bible school. Only a little boy named David. Only a little boy was he, amen? I mean, that was impressive, Again, he could have been satisfied. He could have stopped there. I not only killed a bear, I not only killed a uh, lion, <laughs> I killed a giant. 
I killed a giant. Hey, look, look over here in my trophy case. You see that slingshot? That was the one. That was the one. It's retired now. It's retired. That's it. That's, that's, the, that's the slingshot that did it. I mean, he, Goliath was out there talking smack. Oh, you come to me like I'm some dog. What, what smack? He dead. There's a slingshot. There's a slingshot. He said, look, look, look over here. Here's something else I got. That right there, that's the, that's the rock. That's the rock I used. That was the rock. Oh, yeah, I, I took a few rocks, but that was the one who did him in. I even got his sword. I love that part of the story. That's what I call being more than a conqueror. A conqueror is, kills a giant. More than a conqueror cuts off the giant's head with the giant's sword. But that's what David was. He was not satisfied with the lion and the bear. So he comes to Goliath and he takes out Goliath. And again, that's impressive. In fact, if we turn over to 1 Samuel, we find out that he got the attention of the men, the women, and the king. 1 Samuel 18, verse 6. Now it had happened as they were coming home when David was returning from the slaughter of the Philistine. I love Old Testament language. The slaughter of the Philistine, that the women had come out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with joy, and with musical instruments. So the women sang as they danced and said, Saul was slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. Talk about impressive. He had women dancing and singing in the street singing his praises. He wouldn't have had a problem getting a date to the prom. Am I right? I mean, this dude, women are saying he's killed his ten thousands. And even the king takes note. Now, that wasn't that good a deal because at that point, Saul decided he wanted to kill David. But the bottom line is he got, he, he got the attention of the entire nation because when he killed that giant, all those other people that live in the land of the probable and the possible came out from behind the rocks and then they helped go scatter the rest of the Philistines. But until David took care of Goliath, they were all behind the rock watching the crazy guy. But then the crazy became possible. Now everybody wants in on the action, amen? But again, what would have happened if David had become satisfied with being known as a giant slayer? Well, he would have missed out on God's true destiny for his life. Because while some saw him as a dedicated shepherd boy, and some saw him as a giant slayer, God, who mattered most, saw him as the leader of a kingdom. He saw him as the king of Israel. So what is that to us? I want to encourage you this morning, don't stop short of the destiny that God has for you. Don't be satisfied with the probable. Don't be satisfied with the possible because the God you serve wants to do exceedingly and abundantly more in you than you could ever think or imagine. Don't stop short. God has more. God always has more. He has exceedingly, abundantly more. Don't stop short. Don't think I can't. Think you can some of you here this morning, especially young people, you may think, well, I have these dreams, but I'm not sure I can accomplish it. I can assure you of this. If it's in God's plan, he'll not only fulfill that dream, he will do exceedingly above everything that you could ever ask or think. Right now in this building, probably all of us are thinking, here's where I believe God wants me. Well, can I tell you that's not where God wants you? Because he wants you somewhere even exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what you're thinking even right now. Don't stop short. I must admit, the first time I watched Facing the Giants, while I really did enjoy the movie, there were so many times I found myself saying, yeah, well, that doesn't happen in real life. It was another one of those Hallmark moments, right? Everything works out on Hallmark. So that's what I begin to think. Or back to that comment I said earlier, ah, trick photography. That's how they pulled it off. You know, isn't it amazing when we, you see what I did there? 
I put we so you could feel my guilt. You're welcome. It's amazing when we see that which cannot be explained, and instead of just stepping back and saying, but God, now we conclude trick photography. See, that's, that's the words of a doubter. That's the words of someone who don't believe that he can do exceedingly and abundantly. Those who are always trying to find the hidden meaning of how it happened, right? That, those are doubters. But it does make you wonder. It makes you wonder how many times we have, may have missed out on a but God moment in our life because we had settled our faith between probable and possible. How many of those but God moments may have passed us by because we were too busy thinking trick photography? Another benefit of the blindfold is that it not only helps move us into the realm of the impossible, but it also makes us more sensitive to the voice of the Spirit. In this case, it made, his, uh, it made him more sensitive to the voice of the coach. In our case, more sensitive to the voice of the spirit. In the video, the player moves down the field and he's guided by the voice of the coach. You know why? Because Brock surrendered his sight and then he began to tune in to what the coach was saying. It's kind of like in the natural if you begin to lose your sight, but you can still hear, what do we do? We gravitate to our hearing so that we can kind of hear what somebody's saying, even though we may not be able to see. That's what the blindfold does. That's the blindfold blessing. It ends up surrendering our sight to God and then tuning our, end, our ear into the Holy Spirit so that we can be sensitive to his voice, so that we can move on down the field. If the player started moving too far, too right, what'd the coach do? He said, hey, back to the right, back to the left, always bringing him back to the center. In a sense, the coach had become the eyes of the player. That's what the blindfold will do. The blindfold will cause our sight to be dictated by God and not us. And all we're doing is listening to the voice of the Lord. What's the voice of the Spirit saying to us? On a much smaller scale, the coach illustrates how the Holy Spirit works in our lives as he moves us beyond the expected into the realm of the impossible. Like the coach, the Holy Spirit comes alongside. He guides us. He directs us. He challenges us. He encourages us. He strengthens us for the journey. However, there's one thing he does not do, nor did the coach do. When old Brock was trying his best and he was feeling the burn, and I don't mean Bernie Sanders, I mean the burn. He was feeling the burn. He was like, coach, I don't know if I can go anymore. Coach, it hurts. Coach, I'm tired. Coach, I need to rest. The one thing that you never heard that coach say and the one thing you're never going to hear the Holy Spirit say is, okay, that's enough. You can stop. He never said that. He never said, oh, okay, I get it, I get it. Okay, stop. You're good, you're good. Mm -mm. You know why the coach never said that to his player? Because the coach knew something about that player that he didn't know about himself. And that is he knew that that player could go further than that player knew that he could go. He believed that that player could go all the way to the end zone. Can I tell you this morning, the Holy Spirit will never tell you that's enough. He will never tell you, okay, you've, you've done enough. No. Why? Because he knows something about you that you don't know about yourself. He is able to take you exceedingly, abundantly further than you could ever think or imagine. I'm telling you this morning, we need to get a hold of the fact that God doesn't want us settling for the probable and the possible. He wants to take us to the realm of the impossible. Before I bring this to a close, I want to remind you of the foundation of our faith, the foundation of our faith, because all faith is not created equal. There's lots of people say, well, I have faith. But you need to dig a little deeper 
if you want to find out exactly what they mean by they have faith. Because while all faith may to some degree involve expectation of the unseen, not all faith rests on the same foundation. In fact, some faith doesn't rest on a foundation at all. It's called blind faith, meaning there is no substance to their faith. I call it a faith without a resume. But our faith is not blind. Our faith does have a resume. This morning, I'm talking about a blindfold, not blind faith. This is the resume of our faith. And so when the world looks at you and say, oh, yeah, you're one of them Christians, blind faith. I'm not, it's not blind faith, my friend, because here's the resume of the one that I am basing my faith on. Take a look at the book and tell me where he ever gone wrong. Tell me where, whenever he decided he was going to do something that he didn't do it. So yeah, I'm believing for something I can't see, but it's backed by a resume that is perfect, that is pristine, that has never missed the mark. It's not blind faith to believe in God. It is a settled faith founded upon his word. We see that in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Hebrews 11, verse 3, it says, By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. This is telling us is that when God decided to create the world, he didn't go look in his heavenly garage for extra pieces and say, let me see if I can craft a world here and put it out there. No, it means that he called something out of nothing. He created something out of nothing. He didn't have a little bit of this or a little bit of that and then made do. No, he had nothing, but he called forward something. And how did he do it? Did he do it with a hammer and a nail? No, he did it by his word. He spoke the word and the world came into existence. That's the foundation of our faith. That phrase by the word of God is what is, gives substance to our faith. Our faith, again, is not blind. Our faith is predicated on the surety of God's word. It was the surety of God's word that caused Noah to build an ark without any evidence of rain. You can read about it there in Hebrews 11 or the full story in Genesis. But let's think about Noah for a moment. There's some evidence that Noah had never even seen a raindrop up to this point. He didn't even know what rain was. Noah went from zero to ark. You and I would have went from zero to umbrella. Let's just test this thing first and see. And if we see a cloud, we'll have an umbrella. And then we may go to a small boat. And then maybe another boat. Eventually, we may get to yacht. Or yacht. Ooh, that'd be nice. But uh, ark. (laughs) Yacht is the 2020 term. Uh, But Noah, Noah goes from zero to ark. Why? Was he crazy? No. But remember, the crazy see the possible, impossible become possible. Here's why he did it. Hebrews 11, verse 7. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear. Why did he go from zero to ark? Because he had heard the voice of God who said, build an ark. It says he was divinely warned. God spoke. Noah responded. And the crazy became possible. It was the surety of God's word that caused Abraham to leave his homeland in pursuit of the promised land. Well, that sounds reasonable enough until we factor in the part of the verse that says, and he went out not knowing where he was going. Abraham didn't have a Google map. He didn't have something circled in an atlas telling him, hey, here's the promised land. Get get going. No. No. He got lost on purpose. He left on purpose. Uh, Now, me, yeah, I may end up somewhere not knowing where I am, but it's never on purpose. But what would possess a man like Abraham to wake up one day and say, you know what I think I'll do? 
I'm going to pack all my bags. I'm going to tell my family goodbye, and I'm just going to go. What would cause him to do that? Was he just bored? No. I'll tell you what caused him to do it. Verse 8 tells us that Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. Again, God spoke, Abraham responded, and the crazy became possible. I hope you're seeing a trend here. And it was the surety of God's word that caused Moses to go from tending sheep to delivering a nation. Now, by all accounts, Moses had assimilated to the life of a shepherd. It didn't really say that he had a desire to return to Egypt. He had found a wife. He had a family. He had put his stake down, so to speak. I mean, life is good, I guess, as it can be if you're a shepherd. But then one day, Moses says to himself, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this place, leave my family for the time being. I'm going to go back to Egypt. I'm going to go to that Pharaoh, and I'm going to put my finger in his face and tell him to let my people go. Well, now what would possess a man like Moses to do that? I mean, he didn't leave Egypt under the best of circumstances to begin with. And now he's going to go back? And he's going to go to the Pharaoh and he's going to say, let my people go. Why would he do such a thing? Well, let's read. What changed? Well, one day he was tending those sheep and God showed up. And God said to Moses, come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Why did Moses go? Because God told him to go. God spoke. Moses responded. And the crazy became possible. And two million Jews walked out of Egypt. Not, they didn't walk out poor either. I mean, they ransacked. All, those, those Egyptians were just giving them everything that they could just to get rid of them. How does that happen? Because someone dared to respond to the voice of the Lord and wasn't willing to stake their flag of faith in the probable or the possible. So in closing this morning, it is with that same surety, the surety of God's word, that I declare to you that the God you serve is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. Those are not just words, my friend. That's God speaking. That's God speaking. This morning, God is speaking. God is speaking. I believe he's speaking to some of you right now. And you feel that in your spirit, that God is calling you to go beyond where you've never been before. And maybe you've been kind of holding back You've been thinking, I don't know. Maybe it's somebody else. No, it's you, friend. It's you. God wants to do in you more than you ever dreamed possible. It doesn't matter how old you may be, how young you may be. God still wants to take you to a place that you have never been before. Sometimes when we're younger, we think, well, I got to wait till I'm older. And then when we get older, we think, well, now I'm too old. No. No. No, Caleb went and got a mountain when he was way past his years. Don't ever think you're too old that God can't do something exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ever think. He can and he will. And so the question this morning is, God has spoken, will you respond? Will you respond? God spoke, Noah responded. God spoke, Abraham responded. God spoke and Moses responded. God is speaking. Will you respond? That's the question we have to answer this morning. The Holy Spirit desires to work through you in ways that far exceed what you could ever think or imagine. Don't allow your faith to settle between the probable and the possible. Don't stop short 
of the destiny that God has for your life. Don't plant your faith flag in the land of the expected. You may be here this morning and you've messed up. Well, you're looking at someone who messed up many times over. But God's still using me. And I believe he's going to take me further than I've ever been before. If you've messed up, that doesn't mean God is finished with you. That doesn't mean you have to settle for where you are now and say, well, I guess it's the best it's ever going to be. Oh, no, my friend. God will use you and God will take you further than you've ever been before. You see, it's not about getting a new car in your garage. It's not about more money in your bank account. It's about having a heart that says, God, use me to advance your kingdom. That's what that verse is really telling us. He wants to work in us exceedingly abundantly to use us to advance his kingdom. God speaking. Will you respond? You know what we need to do this morning? We need to surrender our sight to God and say, God, here's the blindfold. I'm taking the blindfold, God, and I'm going to put it over my eyes and I'm going to surrender my sight to you that I may hear your voice, that I will not walk by sight, that I will not stop short. God, I surrender my sight to you today so that you may lead me, Father. Because as long as we have our sight, we're going to lead ourselves to where we want to go. But when we surrender our sight and we put on the blindfold, what we find is now we're dependent upon God. Now he can speak. And we're more keen to listen and be sensitive to the Spirit. So let us this morning say, Lord, Take me beyond my expectations. God, take me beyond my dreams. God, take me to places known only to you. God, take me to the realm of the impossible. If you believe God can do that, stand to your feet. If you believe that God can take you further than you've ever been, then would you do me a favor? Would you just lift your hands kind of as a sign of surrender, kind of like reaching up and taking that blindfold that I feel like God is just placing all over this building right now, just kind of, he's saying, here you go, here's the blindfold. Will you take it? So just reach up with your hand, take that blindfold and say, Father, I'm putting this blindfold on. And I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to be, my ears going to be tuned into you. Holy Spirit, I want you to speak. As they sing, would you begin to just cry out to the Father and say, God, lead me. Take me. Take me to places I've never been, God. Listen to me, young people. Take me to places I've never been. He will take you further than you could ever imagine if you will yield yourself completely to him, surrender your sight that we might do his will. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's praise the Lord. Father God, we love you this morning. God, I'm thankful this morning that you are God and there is none like you. God, this is not just a hope so. This is not just a maybe so. But Father, our hope is a firm expectation backed by the resume of God himself. Lord, I pray for folks in this building right now as they are reaching up to you, Father. I pray that you would birth in some folks right now what you want to do for them, Father God. Birth in them right now where they realize you want to take them further than you have never, that they've never been before, God. We ask that you would do it in Jesus' name. Let's worship the Lord this morning. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. 
with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on. All my life, for all my life you have been faithful. Thank you, Lord. Well, all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness. Sing that again all my life. Oh, Lord, for all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Come on, your goodness. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. It's your goodness is running after, keeps running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, keeps running after me. One more time. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me, oh Lord. Your goodness is running after, it keeps running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Sing it, church, one more time, all my life. All my life you have been faithful. Yes, all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Yes, I will see of the goodness of God oh I will see of the goodness of God come on give the Lord praise for it you're good to us Lord hallelujah amen can you keep the hand going for brother Michael Bridge what a great word this morning my friend Amen. Amen. I believe that encouraged you this morning. I haven't done a bear crawl in years. How about you? Amen. And, uh, but, uh, man, thank you for challenging us this morning. May even when we can't see it, he's still working if we'll just be obedient. Amen. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you back here on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. We'll be continuing our study on the Beatitudes. Don't forget we have our offering receptacles here down front. Anytime before or after service, you are welcome to bring your giving. And uh, just look forward to uh, seeing you guys on Wednesday at what time? 7 o'clock. All right. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon. We'll see you soon. Amen.